morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to the virtual home of Light on the Corner Church here in beautiful downtown Montrose. I'm uh, here with my lovely assistant and beautiful daughter, both of those things. Kiana Karn, welcome, Kiana. Thank you. Hey, I got a question for you right at yeah. the beginning. Uh, are you one of those anti-vax people? No. You're not? No. Did you get the shot? I got the shot. Yeah. What did it do to you? Did you get, like, grow a third arm or I something? Got my second, uh, I got my second shot last Tuesday. Yeah. Wow. So yeah. you're alive? Well, I, I woke up on Wednesday. I, I felt a little different, you know? And How did you feel different? Well, I was looking at my mom, and, and all of a sudden I could read her thoughts, you know? The second shot does that? I guess it can, you know? It's one of those little known side effects and then I got up to make some breakfast yeah and I fried some bacon with my new laser vision <laughs> I also wow. flew here today <laughs> so okay I want to know first of all was this the Johnson and Johnson or the Pfizer or the it's Moderna the Pfizer it's the Pfizer it's the Pfizer that's great yeah so I don't know what to tell you but you might want to get this shot because I want to I'm have pretty laser sure I vision. get my own comic book now. They're gonna, Marvel's gonna call me. And you get everything. Yeah. And I have antibodies too, so I guess I'm just special. I need antibodies to attack my body because <laughs> I got too much body. You I know, need more antibody antibodies. doesn't sound very good. No, it doesn't. Antibody. Shouldn't they be called pro bodies? Interesting. Obviously, you've, had, you've had just as much medical training as the fact checkers on Facebook. <laughs> so, not why not? Yeah. I can't believe this is what we're talking about. Okay. Are you hungry? Funny you should ask. I am not hungry and I will never eat again because I'm so full. Last night we went over and had... Uh, Oh boy. Kebab. D dinner. What was it? Kebab. 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 If and you rice and tomato and chicken uh, by Hovik and Rita and Ani and Arby. 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 And Mariam. Mariam. And I'm Persian so full. style. Yeah. So you should. Wow. If you're ever hungry, just eat that. It's it's like a vaccine for hunger. Yeah. You'll never be hungry again. Yeah. Wow. Those who eat of this kebab will never hunger. That's a lousy Jesus yeah. quote. Yeah. Okay, but I understand. Let's preach you're talking now. about living kebab. <laughs> Is that what you're talking yeah. about? Yeah. Whoever, no, just, I'm going to stop now. <laughs> this is bad. It's kind of fun to see you unscripted of course you're unscripted every week but the it's shot took my jokes <laughs> but it gave so me there, powers. there was a negative <laughs> and you go you're gonna fly home or you're gonna drive i don't know i'll see what kind of mood i'm in your mother and i would prefer it if you flew because we don't trust the people on the freeway yeah. all right let's get down to business now i am preaching from the bible like we always do and here's the deal if you don't if you don't like, you know, a lot of people don't like preaching from the Bible. That's true. But Smart people do. Yeah, and that's just what I'm going to do. So if you don't like sermons from the Bible, uh, I should tell you I'm not sorry and I'm not going to change it. So we're in Acts chapter 3 today. And I think that that's a happy, fun chapter. Yep. And uh, it has no food or kebab, no kebab. in it, but... It's still a great, great passage. You Acts really chapter enjoy 3. It. Turn there in advance. Okay. All you right, ready? well, yeah. Okay. Wait. Okay. Vamanos. When the church, let's just dive right in, shall we? When the church of Jesus Christ was brand new, I know it's, it's been here a while now, but when it was brand new, Peter and John, two wonderful apostles, went to a prayer meeting at the temple. What, where else would two Jews in Jerusalem go to pray at the time of prayer? 
And the apostles saw a crippled beggar asking for money. And, and being faithful apostles, they had none. So what are they to do? You go in to pray, there's a beggar asking for money and you don't have any, but you want to do something nice. What do you do? That's what we're talking about today. Let's bow in prayer first, though. Holy Father, encourage us today by the godly example of Peter and John. We live in a world that can't wait to be offended. Set us free, I pray, from the world's mold. And help us now to preach, I ask in Jesus' name. Amen. I so appreciate the band's opening today. It took a miracle. This whole chapter, it took a miracle by John W. Peterson in 1948. Sounds a lot different in 1948 than it sounds by our band. It's very different. Anyway, the whole chapter, all of Acts 3, is about a miracle. But mostly, it's about Peter's speech after the miracle. Matthew Henry said of the speech after the miracle, he said, the former part of the discourse opens the wound, the latter applies the remedy. That's exactly right, and that's pretty good. So I will borrow Matthew Henry's description for part of our outline. But first, the miracle. It took a miracle. One day, Peter and John were going up to the temple at the time of prayer, at three in the afternoon. Now, a man who was lame from birth was being carried to the temple gate called Beautiful, where he was put every day to beg from those going into the temple courts. When he saw Peter and John about to enter, he asked them for money. Peter looked straight at him, as did John. And then Peter said, look at us. So the man gave them his attention, expecting to get something from them. Then Peter said, silver or gold I do not have, but what I do have I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. Taking him by the right hand, he helped him up, and instantly the man's feet and ankles became strong. He jumped to his feet and began to walk. And then he went with them into the temple courts, walking and jumping and praising God. When all the people saw him walking and praising God, they recognized him as the same man who used to sit begging at the temple called Beautiful. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. So here, as you may recall, we see the same pattern as Pentecost. First there's a miracle, then there is a sermon about the miracle, and the sermon includes a call to repentance and believing in Jesus. You know, dear ones, I hope you know that the power of God on earth was unleashed by Jesus. God could always do anything he wanted, of course. But when King Jesus came, he came with power and authority over demons and diseases. But after Jesus' departure, I want to stress this, the power of God remained on earth. Now, most of us have never healed a crippled man with the command, walk. You know, we're not apostles. We expect supernatural signs and wonders from apostles. They were special ambassadors of God sent to authenticate the truth about Jesus and the gospel. So we expect them to do miracles, stuff like this. But if we haven't performed any miracles lately, does that mean that the gospel is no longer true 
and that the Spirit's power is gone from the earth? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. God's work is not limited merely to the miraculous. Did you know that? God does more than miracles. Your powerful God is here at work even when there is no miracle. So when you read a chapter like this and you see the miracle, maybe you think like I do and say, can I do one? Or better yet, can I have one? I got some aches and paints. And if I don't have one, what does that say about me and God's power on earth? Well, when no miracle happens, I want to tell you, in today's world and also in the world of the Bible, usually that's how life is. Miracles are rare, but they're real. Our God can do anything He wants. More than that, He can do anything any way He wants. And every once in a while, it's by, by way of the miraculous. Now, I confess, I would like to miraculously heal somebody and then preach immediately afterward, just like Peter. Seems to me that would be a wonderful thing to do. But God's power is not limited to the miraculous. You know what? God uses nurses. He uses doctors. He uses surgeons and medicine and mundane things like x-rays and lab work. How often have you waited to hear about test results? God works through these kinds of things. And sometimes, God does a miracle. Now, this particular miracle had a particular purpose. And that takes us to number two. Like Matthew Henry said, the wound is opened. While the man held on to Peter and John, all the people were astonished and came running to them in the place called Solomon's colonnade. When Peter saw this, he said to them, fellow Israelites, why does this surprise you? Why do you stare at us as if by our own power or godliness we had made this man walk? The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of our fathers, has glorified his servant Jesus. You handed him over to be killed, and you disowned him before Pilate, though he had decided to let him go. You disown the Holy and Righteous One and ask that a murderer be released to you. You killed the author of life, but God raised him from the dead. We are witnesses of this by faith in the name of Jesus. This man whom you see and know was made strong. It is Jesus' name and the faith that comes through him that has completely healed him, as you can see. Oh, Matthew Henry was right, wasn't he? Peter does indeed open a wound. Look at his you statements that Peter says. You handed him over. You disowned him. You asked for a murderer to be released in his place. You killed the author of life. I reflect on this. What does this mean to me? What does this mean to you? We live in a time when offending someone is the greatest crime. 
Leaving people unoffended matters more than telling the truth. But not to Peter. And I hope not to you. Will followers of Jesus still speak the truth today? Now, I'm not talking about being a jerk. We can find those. We've got enough of those already. I'm talking about something else. I'm talking about the courage to speak the truth when nobody else will. What do you think was going on in Peter's mind before he said what he said? Do you think he thought that no one would be offended by his words? Or on the other hand, did he know he was going to offend his listeners? What I'm suggesting, dear ones, is that sometimes you will have to choose between telling the truth or not offending people. Which will you choose? That's my first comment about this section. Here's my second. Onlookers thought that Peter healed the crippled man. That's how it looked. So Peter said, why do you stare at us as if by our own power or godliness we had made this man walk? But careful listeners knew better and careful readers know better. The Holy Apostle said, by faith in the name of Jesus, this man whom you see and know was made strong. It is Jesus' name and the faith that comes through him that has completely healed him, as you can all see. God had just glorified his servant Jesus by healing a crippled man. Faith in the name. There is power and healing and redemption in that wonderful name, the name of Jesus. Dear ones, let me ask you, what is your relationship? Those, those of you who are close to us here in town and far away, what is your relationship to the name? Sometimes, those of us who follow Jesus, sometimes the name of Jesus, sometimes we share it. Sometimes we wear it. But we always bear it. The name of Jesus. And that's the point of this miracle. That the name of Jesus would be glorified. It's far different from what you hear on TV, from the televangelist who tells you to claim your daily miracle if you send in your money. You can claim your daily miracle. No, no. This miracle happened that the name of Jesus might be glorified. All right, third and lastly, the remedy is applied. After picking, after poking them in the ribs good and hard, Peter was careful to leave them with some hope. He says, now, fellow Israelites, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did your leaders. But this is how God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets, saying that his Messiah would suffer. Repent then and turn to God. I don't know, is that offensive when someone gets in your face and tells you to repent? Maybe so. Repent then and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out, The times of refreshing may come from the Lord, and that he may send the Messiah who has been appointed for you, even Jesus. Heaven must receive him until the time 
comes for God to restore everything as he promised long ago through his holy prophets. For Moses said, the Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among your own people. You must listen to everything he tells you. Anyone who does not listen to him will be completely cut off from their people. Indeed, beginning with Samuel and all the prophets who have spoken have foretold these days. And you are heirs of the prophets and of the covenant God made with your fathers. He said to Abraham, through your offspring, all peoples on earth will be blessed. When God raised up his servant, he sent him first to you to bless you by turning each of you from your wicked ways. So the consequences for rejecting the one Moses and the prophets foretold are dire indeed. But what are the benefits of repentance and faith in Jesus? Peter has good news. He mentions three things. First, your sins are wiped out. How does that sound? And this doesn't happen later, but now. Beginning now and lasting into eternity, you live your life on earth and in heaven as a totally forgiven person. What condemned you no longer exists. It's wiped away. Your sins have been wiped out. That's the first benefit of repentance and faith in the name of Jesus. Second, Times of refreshing come from the Lord. I got to tell you, there's nothing in the whole world, dear ones, like a clear conscience. Those who repent and come to Christ are refreshed and encouraged by the Holy Spirit. John R. Stott wrote, God does not wipe away our sins without adding his refreshment for our spirits. I can testify personally that this is true. Third, the Lord will send the Christ who has been appointed for you, even Jesus. All the Bible scholars I could find say that this promise is in the future. It's eschatological, they say, at the dawning of the kingdom of God in the last days. That could be true. That might be right. But the first two promises are immediate upon repentance and faith in Jesus. And here's my question, dear ones. What if this third promise by the Holy Apostle is immediate too. Think about that. Jesus said, those who accept my commandments and obey them are the ones who love me. And because they love me, my Father will love them. And I will love them and reveal myself to each of them. The Lord will send the Christ on the last day, dear ones, whether you believe in him or not. Because Jesus is coming back. But if you turn from your sins and turn to God, Peter says, the Lord will send the Christ who has been appointed for you. So, I would close, dear ones, the same way Peter does. When God raised up his servant, he sent him first to the Jews to bless them by turning each of them from their wicked ways. And the Jews came first. And to the rest of us, Gentiles, who are blessed to hear the truth about Jesus, God has blessed us with the name that is above every name. All the saving power that was unleashed 
to save a Jewish crippled man is available to every one of us by the power of his name. Isn't that good news? Praise his name. Let's bow in prayer. Father in heaven, make us bold like Peter and just as truthful. I ask that we would be so grateful for our salvation that the truth would captivate our thinking and conversation. Thank you for giving us truly good news. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Hi, everybody. Thank you for watching. Our quiz for today is, leave it in the comments below, is there anything wrong with you or Pastor John if you've never performed a miracle yourself? Is there anything wrong with you? Okay? Leave your best answer there below. Be sure to like this video, subscribe to our channel, and check out the links in the description below. They will take you to our website and our giving options if you have tithes or offerings. Um, we will be closing our service today with a wonderful song called Soulful Strut um, because the, the guy who got healed, he started jumping around and uh, soulfully. So uh, enjoy that, our wonderful band. And um, other than that, I think we're good. We love you. We're praying for you. Please reach out if you have any special prayer requests. And until next week, um, we will see you then. All right. Lord bless. Thank you.